Hi there, and welcome to another Light Rider Tips video, and this time I want to talk to you about backups. Now, backups are important for two reasons. The first is that Light Rider itself may crash, or it may install an app update, and the next time you start Light Rider, you could find that you've lost the settings on some of your lighting fixtures or some of your presets in some of your projects. The second reason that you will always want to make a backup is simply because that you might make a mistake. You could open up a project, change some of your light fixtures, make some changes to some of the presets, and then find out that you've done that in the wrong project and you want to be able to go back. Now there are a couple of options uh, to making backups of Lightrider settings. The first is in Lightrider app itself. So if I tap the menu key at the top left, you'll see that uh, part way down it's listing all of my projects. Now if I want to make a backup copy of my Baytree Hotel project, I can tap Baytree Hotel and then simply hit create a project. Okay, I'm going to give this a name that represents the fact that it's a backup of my Baytree Hotel. So I'm going to call it Baytree Hotel Backup. I'm going to leave keep fixtures switched on and I'm going to leave keep presets switched on. So that will ensure that this new project is in fact an exact replica of the Baytree Hotel and it's got all of my fixtures and all of my presets are also included. So I'm going to tap create and if you now look down the left hand side you'll see that I've got one project called Baytree Hotel and one project called Baytree Hotel Backup. So if I ever get to my Baytree Hotel venue and uh, switch on Light Rider and find out for some reason that I've managed to lose some of the uh, lighting fixtures in there or some of the presets. I know that I've got a previously saved backup copy of that particular project and I can use that one whilst I'm at my gig. When I get home I can then sort that little mess out, I can delete the Beijing Hotel, make another backup copy um, and then change some names uh, and I hopefully be able to put my Beijing Hotel project back together and when I get home. Now another option that you could consider is to create uh, what I've often called a master project or a project that contains all of the lighting fixtures that you use regularly and therefore that gives you a starting point if you ever run into trouble you can always go so got something that you can fall back to. Uh, which is a project that contains all of the lighting fixtures that you typically use um, and uh, a number of presets uh, that may suit those lighting fixtures. So again, so it's, it is possible that you could go and create a master uh, which just gives you a place to fall back to rather than uh, getting to a gig and find you've got nothing at all. Now the third option that you may see on the screen here and something that I use is a sandbox. Now a sandbox is just a place that I often go and experiment. I try out some different lighting fixtures if I want to uh, see if I can get something to work. I might drop those lights on their own into that particular sandbox um, and have a play around in, with them in there. Now as a sandbox itself it's not something that I particularly care about and to be honest if I lost the contents of that I probably wouldn't be that upset which is why I often try to leave Light Rider set with the project sandbox selected as the last thing I used. Now my experience of Light Rider is that if it's going to crash or if an app update is going to be installed, the project that's most likely to become damaged is the last project that you selected. So if I am feeling particularly organized, I try and make sure that sandbox is the project that I last looked at before I close the app. As I said, it's not something that I particularly care about. So if therefore, if it does get trashed for any reason, um, I'm not suggesting Light Rider should do this, and I'm hoping that if there are any bugs within the software, then they get ironed out. But if it is gonna trash something, personally, I'd rather it trash something uh, that I don't really care about, which is, as I said, why I have Sandbox there. It's for me to have a play around in, and it's for me to be able to lose the contents if, I, uh, if the app crashes. Okay. So that's how you can back up things within Light Rider app itself. I'm now going to talk about how you would back up your iPad using iTunes. To make a backup copy of your iPad, you're going to need a lightning cable to USB connector, plug your iPad into your laptop, and then start iTunes. When iTunes starts, look for the iPad icon right next to the music dropdown. Click the iPad icon, and then look down the left-hand side for file sharing. 
If you click file sharing, you'll then see all of the apps installed on your iPad that support file sharing with iTunes. If you click Light Rider, you'll see all of the folders and all the files that are currently on your iPad that Light Rider uses. Now to make a backup copy of those, you just click any one of those, hit Command and A if you're using a MacBook, or Control and A if you're using a Windows machine, and then click Save. Go and find yourself a folder that you can put your Light Rider backups in. So I typically, I've got a folder called Light Rider Backups and I typically name my folders uh, with a date. So it makes it nice and easy for me to see when I created those backups. So I'm gonna call this one first May 2018, hit Create and then choose Save. And if you then see at the top of the screen, very quickly within iTunes, uh, that uh, all of the files that were or are still on my iPad are now also in my 1st of May 2018 folder on my MacBook. Now, some of the folders in names in here uh, you should recognize. They will be the names of the manufacturers of the lighting fixtures uh, and the profiles that you've downloaded to use within Lightrider. There are a couple of files in here like latest project name and SSL info, um, downloaded SSL uh, libraries, uh, files that Lightrider uses internally. And there's a curious folder also called DJ app. Now, if you look in the DJ app folder, then surprise, surprise, you're gonna see some files in there that you recognize, and those are your project files. Those are the project files that contain light fixtures and the presets uh, that you saved uh, within Lightrider itself. Now, I do not recommend that you open these files to take a look at them. They're not readable, and if you load them into any editor and accidentally save them, you would almost certainly trash the contents of the files, and they would not work if you tried to restore them uh, to your iPad. So, as I said, I would not recommend you look at these. Um, they're definitely not readable, um, but just know that everything that you need is in there, um, safely stored away, and you can restore these files to your iPad uh, using exactly the same method um, using iTunes. Okay, now, if you've got an Android tablet, then there's bad news there is that there is currently a bug in the way that the Android file transfer uh, works, which means that if you were to plug an Android tablet into your uh, MacBook or if you uh, into your Windows PC, uh, and then use the file browsers to see the contents of your Android tablet, then unfortunately the file transfer mechanism doesn't actually show you all of the files that are on your tablet, which means if you can't see them all, you can't back them all up. So there is a bit of a challenge there. There is a way to overcome that. It's not particularly pleasant, um, and it involves basically rebuilding the file libraries on your tablet, um, which personally I don't think is something that most people should have to do to be able to make backup copies of it. So there are some backup tools available for Android uh, from the uh, both the uh, Google Play Store and the Amazon App Store that allow you to backup the files and folders on your tablet either to, the, to a Google Drive um, or to your own laptop. Um, and it's probably worth your while having a look at those. Failing that, go back to the original uh, mechanism that I first showed you in this video, which is where you can make copies of the uh, uh, projects yourself. Okay, so that's it for now. If you've got any questions about this video, then please drop me a line either in the Facebook group for Light Rider Help and Support or just pop them in the comments of this video. Okay, thanks very much for watching and I will see you next time.